Our next speaker is Ariel Alexi, and she will be talking about uh, errors in Clojure. We've all seen them, long stack traces, and we've no idea what we should do about it. And she will help us become error ninjas and manage to understand all these error messages. Please give an applause to Ariel. So, hi everyone. I'm really excited to be here and I want to thank you all for actually appearing in Berlin face to face, I think for two years. Yeah, for two years, so nice one for you. Um, and I want to present myself. So, my name is Ariel. I'm a software developer at Gaiwan. I'm starting my master's degree soon and I posted my third academic article. And right now I'm working on my fourth and fifth. And also I'm an avid baker, but we will reach about cakes pretty soon. So what are we here for today? Java. Wait, Java? No, 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 not a Java talk. Okay, so as most students, Java was my first coding language. And this was the first time where I encountered with errors and exceptions. Basically, that it was nightmare exceptions. And as a noob, I got a lot of them all the time. And I realized that in order to avoid getting those horrifying exceptions, I need to understand what caused them. So then I learned about that there are so many errors and exceptions in Java, but I don't have the time for it. I'm immortal, so my time here is limited. So I've done some digging, and then I learned about patterns. Once I learned about patterns, I was able to really understand what caused the error problem. And then I started to work in Gaiwan, and I was introduced to Clojure. So I was so confident, since Clojure runs on the JVM, the error and the never-ending exceptions and stock trace won't be a problem anymore. But I wasn't ready for the first time I encountered with closure errors. Please raise your hand if you ever saw that. Well, at least I did more than once. So I will let you see what was my first thought. My first thought was, Oh no, not that again. I was so wrong that errors won't be any problem anymore. I wasn't ready for the first time I encountered with closure errors. But not completely wrong. Okay, so let's talk about errors patterns in closure. But wait a minute, who actually cares about it? Okay, so falling into the rabbit hole again and again and again, the arrows rabbit hole, I made myself think that maybe somewhere out there in the world, another person will find this useful. Maybe not just one person, maybe two, maybe more. So this was actually the reason why I wrote my blog post about it. In the post, I described some patterns that I found, and I published it, and I really hope that I won't be the only reader of my own post. But then, I got some comments and likes on Twitter. But not only, I got some comments and likes on Slack. But not only, I got some comments and likes on Reddit. Apparently, all those people care about closure errors. Yes. Wait, but not only them. Even you, you're all sitting here because you care. So before we talk about closure errors, let me share with you a short story. The birthday cheesecake. Well, my mom had her 50th birthday and I promised to bake her a cake. My mom really loves her cheesecake, but her recipe is a secret, at least back then. So as a human, be as a human being, what I did, Google. I used Google and I got these photos. They look really great, right? So I looked at the recipe, and the recipe didn't look that complicated. Well, I started to bake the cheesecake layer, as you see. Okay, so my angle 
was to bake a cheesecake layer with blueberries layer and at the top, meringue. So I started to bake my cheesecake layer. That was fine. Everything's cool. Then I started to work on the blueberry layer, which was really hard work. But I had a lot of lumps, and actually the problem started when I poured the blueberry layer on the cake. I forgot that in order to get a smooth layer, you need to use a strainer. Oh, well, too late for that now. OK, but I can still make this work. I can fix it. I totally can do something like that. All I need to do is to do a good meringue layer that will look good. I can, I can totally do this. I can totally fix it. But then I ended up with this. OK, so after I started to create my meringue layer, I had another problem. I forgot that I don't have a, a kitchen flamer. And for those of you who are not bakers, you need to use a kitchen flamer in order to create your meringue. OK, so I have two options. Option number one is to go to the store, buy a kitchen flamer, going back home, do the flaming thing, and then go to my parents' house. The other option that I have is to cry to myself for 30 seconds, say, oh, well, I just ruined the cake, then to figure out something else I can do by throwing out the meringue layer and find something else. So I need to be at my parents' house in 15 minutes, so option number one is off the table. Well, I've left with option number two. I need to throw the meringue from my cake. So I switched the meringue to a cream layer, and this was the result. <laughs> I swear it looks really bad, but the flavor was fine. And this was the cake my mom got for her for 50th birthday. So happy birthday, mommy. <laughs> OK, so the very next day I had another celebration. And again, I promised to bake a cake, but I, cannot, I need to do something different. I need to do it differently. I cannot bake the same mistake. So I have three options for cakes. Option number one, my mom's birthday cheesecake. Obviously, I cannot do this one. Option number two is a biscuits cake. Well, I need to bake a cake to impress people and that doesn't look that good. So we're going to option number three. Now option, option number three is my lazy cake, which is basically a cake, chocolate cake, that you bake it in a mug in the microwave for three minutes, hence the name lazy cake. But I couldn't ruin this one, so let me present you closure debug cake debugging with closure. OK? You all learn about my arrows and start to recognize pattern in closure which is basically what we all came. OK, so why do we want to learn about er closure errors patterns? Um, basically, because they will help us to better understand how to handle errors, and more importantly, how to avoid them, which is every software developer dream, not to encounter any errors anymore. OK, so this is the code that we're working with. This is my recipe for my lazy microwave cake. So my ingredients are flour, sugar, oil, cocoa butter, milk, and egg. Basically, the recipe says to combine the, grain, the wet ingredients, the dry ingredients, combine them together, put it in a mug, put it in a microwave, wait three minutes, then you're done and you can eat your cake. By the way, this is a real recipe, so if you're eager to bake your cake, let me know how this turns out. OK, so shall we talk about code? Yes. OK, so here I have a last function. Then I have some bindings. Then I have some functions. And then I have some more functions. OK, so let's run the code and see what happens. Don't worry if you're sitting too far. I will show you what's happening. Oh, wait a minute. I just got an L. Hmm. OK. Wait. OK, this is the error that I got. Hmm. Failed even number of forms, add binding, and then I got closure course back. Well, actually, I have a pattern for this error. OK. This is the pattern for the same error that we just got. This error actually happens during closure compilation phase. Um, 
But let's take a look with this pattern on our actual error that we got. OK, so x is the value where we just got the error, which is, uh, in our case, it's the entity vector. Then we have the reason of this error, even number of forms at the path. In our case, it's binding. And at, at the end, we got the spec, which in our case is closure core specs. OK, so this is our pattern. This is our error. You, always, you might even know that by the name of macro expanding, but we're not going to talk about that. So let's keep, think, let's, let's keep talking. OK, so take a look at the code. Do you recognize where the error is, and how can I fix it? Well, the pattern just told us that we need to take a look on the left part and in the binding, and that we got not even number of entries. So let's fix it. From odd number of entries, now we have even a number of entries. So finger crossed, we fixed the problem. Let's bake my cake. Let's run the code again. Oh, wait a minute. I got another error. OK. Let's take a look on that one. Don't know how to create ISIC from ink. Well, that error happens a lot, at least for me. Basically, what we try to do is to create ISIC, which means a sickable sequence, from ink, which is a function. OK, but you shouldn't be surprised. I have a pattern for that. This is our pattern. Our pattern is don't know how to create y from x. Basically, closure tries to convert x into y, but failed. In our case, x was the ink, and y was the i sick, the sickable part. So let's take a part. Let's take a look on the code and try to fix it. Can you spot the arrow? Yeah. Instead of looking uh, on increment as a function, we are looking at it as a collection. So, which is obviously not. So let's fix it. Great. So this is a solution. Now the map applies the function to every item in the vector. Great, let's run the code again. Well, this time I'm starting to pray to the gods of cakes that I could bake my cake. Oh man, another one. OK. For those of you sitting back behind, I got another error. OK, let's take a look on this one. Java long cannot be cast to IFN. Let's see the pattern. OK, so the pattern that I actually have is x cannot be cast to y. That means that sometimes we're taking something from type x, but the function actually expected it to be from type y. Closure tried to cast it, but fails. In our case, x was the long number, Java long, and the y was actually the function part. So let's take a look again back on the code and try to understand what we need to do. Hmm. Well, we don't want to invoke vegetable oil because this is a binding value. This is it. So let's just remove the parentheses. Great. Let's try to run the code again. And by the way, we ended up with really long stock trace. And this was just a human error, a syntax error. So good for us that we were familiar with the pattern so we could fix it really easily, actually. OK, at least we're progressing somewhere. Hmm. but. That looks a bit weird. OK, my error now is cannot type hint a primitive local. How this could happen? Well, let's take a look on the code again. And this time, what I'm doing is basically extracting some code from my main uh, lazy, uh, lazy cake in order to understand what caused. So here we have the same code, right and left, on the 
your left is version 110, and on my, your right side is version 111. In version 110, we got the exception that we just saw, but on version 111, we, saw, we got the expected value. Well, this error doesn't look like any other pattern that I have. Well, not for every error in Clojure I have a pattern, but well, OK. So actually, um, what caused this problem is that I was using an older version of Clojure. And yes, we all know that we all love Clojure. And um, we don't have a lot of time probably with Clojure version, but we should know what got updated with the version that we are working with. So how do we know that if our, if our error is related to the version that we are working with is basically, number one, use the Slack of the community. Number two is trying to use closure docs and find if there is a ticket about this error. And number three is basically just use as closure. And yes, it is possible that on a single machine, we're going to have different version of closures. Uh, of versions of closure, so this is something that is possible. But keep in mind that update version has consequences. Not all the time the correct way will be to update your version because we all work with a lot of libraries, dependencies, and other open source projects, and things might be broken if we are using a newer version that's not supporting that version. Okay, so actually, maybe the result will be just to use something else. OK, so we just updated our code to <laughs> version 111 instead of 110. Would I could finally bake my cake. So let's figure out together. OK. Didn't reach any error. Let's take a look what I just got. Insert to the microwave for three minutes. Bon appetit. Yes, I can finally go and bake my cake. Woo! Great. So what we actually learned. Number one, don't trust Google when you need to bake a cake, at least Google Photos. Number two is that we just saw several patterns. Obviously, we haven't seen them all. But when you work with closure, you may, came, you may come across with more errors and more pa patterns. But actually getting familiar with them and know them, it's an integral part of really knowing closure. And that is it. Thank you very much. And if any one of you is really interested to talk about this topic, feel free to reach out. And yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Go and back your cake.